uh, supposedly they didn't lease this land until last year. So that's why now they're pursuing it. But you know what? They got to give the people that time to, you know, or help to mm -hmm. help them. I mean, give them a foundation to walk on. Don't just throw them in the street. You can still have the problem. Hello. Right. You know, you got to do some, give people education or motivation, something to get them going. Wouldn't you want to get them off your shoulders? Hey? Why wouldn't you want to help these people? And because of what, how the news when say that we are the poor of the poorest, so what are you, so we're the dirt? I mean, you know what I mean? We're from, human. From what I saw out here, it looked like there was a strong community. Like people, you know, people seem to be working together on stuff, um, yeah. carpooling. Yeah, they help out one another. But also they do bad things to each other. Yeah, yeah, like, like any place, yeah. Apple, right? But, um, yeah, it's more like family and everybody kind of take care of one another. Um, because I guess we only have each other. Mm -hmm. you know? But mm -hmm. the state did promise a lot. And that's the part that really now I'm upset. Because now I feel they owe a lot. And you were saying that the family who died, they were um, from here? They were from the beach, the park. They were really from here, like us, houseless. But they would just come from town, um, stay here every so often. <coughs> I guess to get away from the hustle and bustle, maybe. It's hard on the um, tough. I've seen it, you know, it's tough living out there. I can't believe it. And you said that they were there at the bus stop that day because of the pressure? That night, because they were kicked out of the park. They were kicked out of the park because they had no permit to stay in the park camping. And so that's why the father said, let's go to the bus stop. And he put up a tent. He was going to put up a tent for them to stay across the street. Mm. And that's when it happened. The accident. So if the solo wasn't doing this, you know, then they would be still alive today. This family wouldn't be going through what they're going through. Now. You know, they're always saying, well, these people can go into shelters. What do you think about that? Shelters. I, I haven't been in one, but I heard many stories. And if I was them, I would send in a private investigator. Because they won't find it by walking in the door. They're going to be all ship shape. You know? Uh, I think uh, they need somebody in there to be like one of the people. And to act like them. You know? And that's when they're going to see what goes on. And you'll be surprised what goes on. I heard so many stars and it's all the same and it's a lot of favoritism a lot of people taking the people who's in charge taking wait you mean people who's in charge taking stuff the things that are donated to the people in the, you know, they don't mm -hmm. take good things if it's good but they seem to get first choice they run the place mm. um, and that's not going to be seen unless you go in there but certain people get the choices because they're favorite you know mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. my job I, I, it seems like a lot of people feel that the that the rules are not um, they they that have too is kind of too steep. I mean, you know, if you want to help the people, you cannot treat them like prisoners. You gotta give them their privacy, their life. Uh, as long as it doesn't interfere in anything that pertaining to that them, then I think they shouldn't even be the way like a prison. You know, checking this, checking that. Oh, you late. Oh, this and that. And, you know, it's people get different times. They want to go out. People get different places they want to go. So, how can you? You know, when you do that, you're controlling their life. Diplomatic, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it, I don't think they would like it if right, somebody right. was controlling their life like that. Right, right. So it's really bad. I mean, it could work. It's just they gotta get better people to run it, and mm. you gotta cut down on the rules. Mm. I mean, people want to live the way they want to live. Uh, you can't control them. You know, you can't force them. It's not communism. <laughs> I've I've heard too that there's that there's not much space in the shelters. You know, they say that there's space, but there's really not. Is yes, that true? Yes, I, I hear that too. Um, but from what I heard, it's just a rumor. From what I heard, but I heard that people who went apply at the Barbers Point, nobody from here got accepted. <laughs> And I really don't know why, but they probably have their reasons, I guess. And, and yet, yet, there's a curfew too, right? Yes. And there's yes. other standards you have to follow. Yes. That are, yes. Yeah, and I like had a family that got kicked out, and now they're getting kicked out from here, and they have two children, and now they're going to be sleeping in the car. And that's what I mean. I mean, 
Now, those children, if they don't make it to school, they're going to lose a lot. And why are they reprimanding the children that don't have nothing? Why don't they help the children? I thought this was uh, what they call that education, uh, no child left behind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, some people have said too that the, the the children, if they if they go to different places, they're gonna have to change school districts, right. and that when that happens, they don't get treated well. Right. Well, change is always hard, um, but uh, I think for the kids, too much of this moving around is not so well. I think it's good to have them stable, you know, school where they have the friends and grow up together and you you know they can look back and you know think about their childhood and you know I think that's great to have that solidness I think that's more like more family orientated and I think the families here try to give the kids that but the people with circumstances of the parents what they're going through it affects the children and actually I don't think there should be any children that should be out here um, there shouldn't be any kids out here um, with section 8 and all this I mean these are the families that need them you know, families that really need it. But sometimes get some people who don't, they're taking advantage of the system. No. And I think Section 8 shouldn't be a lifetime thing or whatever. You know, mm -hmm. you help somebody for a little while and then you help them. another person. You know, they mm -hmm. should by mm -hmm. a few years you help this one, they should be able to stabilize themselves, you know. Mm -hmm. And if not, they have a problem somewhere, right? Everybody has a problem. We all have little problems. Right, right. Right, but it sounds like the, the the basic bottom line is that people here haven't gotten the help that is kind of like, um, you know, that the government advertises that they're giving to people. It sounds like people haven't actually received that help, and then when they try to help themselves out here, they're being kicked out. Yeah, yeah. They only, but I, that's why I wrote them a letter, and I told the government, let's face homelessness, let's fight it, let's, let's try to solve the problem. No child should be left in the street. Like how they say, no child left behind, well, no child should be left in the street. And if families and you out there that cannot see that, then if you guys cannot love your own children, then I guess you guys don't really love your children. But, you know, I think every family really want to give their children the best, you know, and just like the families out here. They, and you know what? We got brilliant, bright kids out here. And it's a shame when this kind of things happen and they can't get that education that they need to get the scholarships they can, you know. Because we have a lot of good, smart kids out here. And you'd be surprised. Mm -hmm. And the kids is the one that going to make the new generation change. They're the, the ones going to make the changes in life, you know. Mm -hmm. and, it, and we got some really bright ones. And it's, and it's maybe good that they're going through this because maybe in, when they get older, they can call a politician and help these people. Because maybe the pe politicians, they forget where they came from. Or maybe they never had to deal with things like us. Uh, maybe their circumstances of life was better, but not everybody's life is like that. You know, we do have some that we do have faults, but we can't change that. We just try to make the best of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, mahalo. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you folks who are tuned in, um, that we're we're still out here at Kiaao and. Um, you know, we can. Yeah, I hope that everyone has a pretty good idea of what's going on here and um, how wrong it is. And uh, I and let's ask people to keep calling um, the mayor, the city council, the governor, the governor, and all these folks. To basically, if they want to help people, the help is not booting them right. out of the place right. where they're living. Help. Amen help is <coughs> giving them the actual help that they need. Right. That's what I told them in a letter, that they should make sure that they bring in all the agencies, <coughs> anybody, anyone who's willing to help the houses, because I'm sure there's a lot of good hearts out there, and I'm sure there's a lot of people who want to give or do something for them. And if you can't, if you, they let anybody, outreaches, agencies, anybody, non-profit, profit, anybody who wants to come in and can give, do something for somebody to lighten up their life, to give them the motivation to better their life, then hey, I, I'd be surprised that a lot of people might make it out of here. But you know, by throwing us in the street, you know, I find, I, 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 I pick up stray dogs out here that people dump, and that's how I feel, like they went dump us on the highway, and I feel like those stray dogs, and now I know why I pick them up. Now I know why I care for them, you know? I just lost one tonight, you yeah, know? Yeah, I'm um, so sorry about your dog. But, um, 
you know, we gotta go on and we gotta, now it makes me stronger and now it makes me more angry that this had to come to this, you know, uh, things could have been better and all we asked for a little time, that's all we did and we never get that, but thank you for at least giving us one night, one extra night, because that's maybe a few eight hours or ten hours, thank you, that, that might help me get more things out of the way to take with me, because I don't have much, you know, and I need everything I got now, so, at least I can thank them for that couple hours, but they could have done more. They, they could have gave us a better footing to move on, you know, more help instead of the suicide line and the Humane Society and the two shelters that probably can't take us anyway. So, you know, okay, are they ready to take 200 people? With their animals? Yeah. Like who's going to take their animals to the Humane Society if they can, yeah. you know, if, if they, just so that they can go into some place they don't want to be? They're part of our family too. Like you at home have your pets. That's your family, right? Mm-hmm. So that's the way we feel.